Tea Time with She Brew Royalty features remedies for inner healing and outer beauty, real-time conversations with sisters in the Hebrew Israelite community focused on healing our spirit, mind, and body, which will contribute to the healing of our nation as a whole. Sip a cup of tea, wear your favorite turban, tea, or tunic, and enjoy tea time with Shebrew Royalty. Shalom, 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 aquatium, shalom, sisters, peace and blessings, please, peace and blessings. Come on in, come on in, she brews with your beautiful royal selves. Come on in. As you come in, please do me a favor, hit the like button, share, subscribe, and hit the notification bell. Let everyone know that we are live. Let everyone know that we are live. If you haven't already done so, please hit the like button, share, subscribe, and the notification bell. You know what? Please, please, please hit the notif excuse me, hit the like button right now, right now. What's been happening is we're getting plenty of views, but the likes are not adding up to the views. So I think some of us are forgetting to hit that like button. So please hit that like button. That's the only way that we are going to let people know that we are here, right? So hit that like button as we speak. I see you all are coming in. Praise the most high. Praise the most high. 
Sister Paula, good to see you. Good to see you. When you come in, please post a comment. Let me know that you are here. Post a comment. Let us get this Royal Shebrew Tea Party started. Let us get this started. But before I go any further, let us first do what we do every single time when we come on the broadcast. What do we do first? We give a big, huge shout out, a praise to the almighty, I am that I am, Ahaya Asha Ahaya, the God of the Hebrews and the Shebrews, in the name of his son, Yeshaya, or Christ, right? For bringing us here today, another Sunday, another first day of the week. Wow, we made it through last week. Praise the Most High, we are here. So I am your hostess, Kuala Yakaka, and I humbly thank you for joining me on this broadcast tonight. So how was your week? How was your week, sisters? Talk to me. Talk to me. Tell me how was your week. Post something in the comment. I see we have a few people that are viewing, but um, yes, please. Post something in the comment. Let me know that you are here. I pray that you all had a blessed week. I certainly did. I certainly did, but I could not wait for today. I could not wait for today, the first day of the week. Well, first of all, I couldn't wait for the Sabbath. That's the best day of the week. And so the first day of the week, we are here. We come together once again. And this is so much fun. But before moving forward, let's get all of the housekeeping stuff out of the way, um, all of the disclaimers and everything, so we can just jump right into tonight's exciting broadcast. So let me first start by saying what Tea Time with Shebrew Royalty is not. Tea, she wow, my tongue is tight tonight. <laughs> Tea time with Sheba royalty is not going to be everybody's cup of tea. We get that, we understand, and it's okay. But if you happen upon this channel and you realize that you do not agree with our lifestyle or our beliefs, that's okay too. I encourage you to keep searching YouTube until you find your perfect cup of tea. You owe that to yourself. And I'm sure that you will also find your perfect flavor. What we do ask is that you not leave any insults or derogatory comments because that would be distasteful. We would really appreciate that and we thank you in advance. So Sister Zion says, amazing, all praises to the Most High, Yapa, Shabbat yesterday. Khan, it was. Oh, my sister is here, Althea. That is, that's my sister out there in North Carolina. <laughs> so good to see you, so good to see you. you. You were finally able to get in and to be able to post a comment. Praise the most high. So also, although I am a certified physician assistant, corporate health and wellness coach, and a certified functional nutrition informed professional. And I will be touching on topics of health and wellness on my broadcast. We will not be utilizing this platform to diagnose or treat anyone's illnesses. If you are experiencing any medical problems, please consult your healthcare practitioner. Also, the views that you will hear on this channel are those of myself, my guests, and not those of any particular church or organization. One more thing, if you would like to be a guest on Tea Time with Shebrew Royalty, please send me an email and include a brief description of your business, your product, your service that you provide, or a topic that you are interested in co-hosting. I will put my email address on the banner here for you.
Here's my email ad address, shebrewroyaltybiz at gmail.com. Shebrewroyaltybiz at gmail.com. I would love to hear from you and brainstorm on how we can collaborate and help heal and strengthen Shebrews throughout the four corners of the earth, which will ultimately contribute to the healing of our nation as a whole. So please send me an email to shebrewroyaltybiz at gmail.com. And do not forget to include a brief description of your business, product, or service that you provide, or a topic that you are interested in co-hosting. I would really love to hear from you. Also, let me introduce my sponsor, Orderly Fashion 144, where you can shop for custom trends, designs, accessories, and apparel for the Dapper and Chic. So it's not just for the sisters, but also for the brothers as well. And I am going to put their information on the screen here for you. Give me just a second. orderlyfashion144.com and I am trying to get their email address up here for you as well. Here we go. Info at orderlyfashion144.com So tea time with Shiba Royalty discount code for my guests is Quala, Q-A-L-A, 15, to receive 15% off your purchases. Free shipping will also populate on orders of $70 or more. Orderly Fashion 144 is looking for fashion models that will purchase from the website and submit full body photos wearing whatever apparel that they purchased to receive up to 35% off your orders and one free item per month. You will, also, you will have to um, purchase at least three items monthly from the website in order to qualify. For more information, please send an email to info at orderlyfashion144.com. Now let's talk about my guardian doc. Let's talk about My Guardian Doc. I'm going to bring their information up on the screen here. This is very important. Let me bring this up for you. My Guardian Doc. So it says here, imagine you're a doctor being your best friend for just $27 per month you'll receive a comprehensive package that includes medical guidance, on-demand urgent care, mental health guidance, primary care, and virtual second opinions and more. If you're like me, although I, I'm a medical provider, I don't like urgent cares, I don't like emergency rooms. So if I don't have to go into one of those, then I won't but things come up in our lives, right? Where sometimes we need medical care, medical guidance. And this is the perfect way through telehealth. Of course, not all services can be managed through telehealth, but for those that can, for just $27 per month, you can receive this comprehensive package, like it says, that includes medical guidance, on-demand urgent care, mental health guidance, primary care, virtual second opinion. So if you've been diagnosed with something and you're not quite sure if you agree with that diagnosis, it won't hurt to get a second opinion. So once again, this is another way um, to get a second opinion for $27 a month. So if you're interested, just visit the information, um, the information box below this, um, this video. And there's a link there where you can subscribe. And also the link to the website is there as well. 
myguardiandoc.com. All right, so if you haven't already done so, once again, please hit the like button, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. I hope you're wearing your favorite turban, tee, tunic, or your dress. That being said, let's sip some tea and have healthy talk. Let's get this royal tea party started. So let's see who's here. So Sister Princess is here. Shalom, Sister Princess. So good to see you. Sister Paula said a beautiful week working in the yard, in the garden, praising the most high. I know. Oh, my gosh. You have to send me. Sister Paula, you must send me some pictures of your garden. I know it has grown so much. And I want to see those chickens as well. Send me some pictures and a video. So sisters, what is your cup of tea tonight? What is your cup of tea tonight? Please post what, what is your cup of tea? What are you drinking right now? So I am going to tell you a little bit about my, my, my glass. Let me put it that way. My glass of tea. Kombucha. Kombucha. This is my homemade kombucha. It is finally done. And oh my gosh, I must tell you, and I am not, I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging. I'm just saying. <laughs> I am just saying this kombucha is so refreshing. It is so tasty. It is so amazing. I've had the store-bought kombuchas, but I am telling you something. There is nothing like this homemade kombucha. And let me, let me tell you about the flavors that I made. So this one, I don't know if you can see it really well. This one is my strawberry lemon, strawberry lemon and mint kombucha. Yum. And this one is my raspberry, blueberry, yes, raspberry, blueberry, basil, kombucha. And they're made with black tea. And this one is simply um, lavender, simply lavender. But I am telling you, this one has a kick. This one has a kick to it. It is, oh my gosh. So today I blended, I blended the lavender and the raspberry, blueberry, basil. And this is what I've got. And tasty, tasty, tasty. So if you haven't already made kombucha, Please, please, please put that on your list of things to do on your bucket list. You must make some homemade kombucha. If you buy store-bought kombucha, you will never, you will never, I promise you, you'll never go to the store and buy kombucha again. I'm just saying. <laughs> so as usual, I'm going to show a video. This video is from You Brew kombucha and it's about kombucha basics about selecting the tea for your kombucha for your homemade kombucha so let me bring this video up fair use for educational purposes only Welcome to Ubrew Kombucha. This is your Kombucha Basics Guide to Tea. So I'm going to get started by talking a bit about what exactly tea is. A lot of people don't realize this, but tea actually comes from one plant. So whether it's green tea, black tea, oolong tea, or white tea, it's the same plant. It's the Camellia sinensis plant. And that's the type of tea that works best for kombucha making. Even though all of those teas come from the same plant, the real difference lies into the way it's processed. Some teas are dried and not fermented for a very long time, and it makes for a very mild flavor. 
like white tea. Some teas are dried and fermented for a very long time, like black tea, and it makes for a more robust flavor of tea. The best type of tea to use for kombucha is black tea, and it's because black tea has the most tannins present in each of the individual tea leaves. The nutrients extracted from the tea are what's going to help feed the bacteria and yeast during the kombucha fermentation process. You'll find that my recipes really only use black tea, and that's for a couple of reasons. I find that compared to white tea or oolong tea, it tends to have a more robust flavor, which I happen to really like, and it's because it also provides the most amount of nutrients for your kombucha to actually go through the fermentation cycle. More recently, I've started experimenting by adding a small amount of green tea into my black tea while it's steeping to see if that affects the flavor profile of my kombucha at all. And I found that it's actually led to a weaker taste tasting brew, which isn't really my favorite. So based on what I'm looking for, I really like the flavor that black tea gives my kombucha. As a general rule, I like to stick with black tea because it's the healthiest for the kombucha and because I've been able to make dozens and dozens of batches of really delicious tasting tea with that. I like to use loose leaf tea and it's for a couple of reasons. One, I'm a really big tea drinker and that's the type of tea that I prefer and have on hand anyway. And two, it's a lot cheaper to buy it in bulk than it is to buy a bunch of individual tea bags. For the most part, when you buy tea and tea bags at the store, the tea that's in those bags are actually a poorer quality or they're smaller pieces of tea and not whole loose leaf bits of tea. That means that over the course of the steeping cycle, the longer you steep it, the more bitter your brew is going to get. I like to use loose leaf tea because they can withstand longer brew times better than bagged tea. And it's also more environmentally friendly because that way you're not throwing away a bunch of tea bags. When you're choosing the right tea for your kombucha, it's important to be really mindful of what ingredients are in the tea. You don't want any tea that has any essences or flavorings, even if it says it's natural flavorings or fruit flavorings, only because any other added chemicals or essences could affect the symbiosis of your SCOBY and ultimately weaken your SCOBY over time. So even black teas like Earl Grey have bergamot flavoring. And even though I've heard some rumors that there are some commercial brewing operations that actually use Earl Grey tea in their first fermentation cycle, I don't recommend it for the home brewers unless you have a lot of SCOBYs backed up on hand, only because over time, depending on your SCOBY and depending on the type of essence that they use in the tea, it could weaken your SCOBY and make it more prone to mold over time. So depending on whether you're using black tea or green tea, and depending on the quality of your tea, it really affects how long your steeping time should be when you're making your kombucha. So play around with it and see what works best for you. One thing to note is that it really is important to have a bit of a longer steeping time for your tea, longer than the amount of time you'd normally take to steep a normal cup of tea. And it's because you really wanna make sure that the hot water has enough time to extract as much nutrients from the tea as possible, since your SCOBY depends on those nutrients to survive and thrive. It is worth mentioning that you can mess around with the types of tea you use during the first fermentation phase. People have successfully used yerba mate and rooibos and even hibiscus flowers to make a successful first fermentation brew. So feel free to experiment. Make sure you have some backup scobies on hand just in case any of your experiments go wrong. Just keep in mind that no matter what tea you use during the first fermentation phase, the final outcome and the final taste of your tea is really more highly dependent on the flavorings you use during the second fermentation phase in the bottle. And that's when the opportunities are really way more endless than the types of tea that you're limited to during the first fermentation phase. At that point, you can really use anything to flavor it and you don't need to worry about weakening your SCOBY over time because you're just gonna drink the bottle. If you want more information, be sure to check out the other videos on my channel. And as always, you can go to youbrewkombucha.com for more. Happy brewing. Awesome. So that's a little bit of information, the basics about choosing the right tea for your kombucha. So let's see who's here. Oh, let's. So Sister Princess is having moringa tea. Sister Zion is having hibiscus tea. Althea is having Bigelow orange and spiced herbal tea. Oh my gosh, you guys are really doing it tonight. And Ahab Karad is saying, let's see, Shalom, my sisters, glad to be here. So good to have you here as well. Good to have you here as well. So once again, hit the like button, share, subscribe, hit the notification bell. We are about to get started.
Another favor I have to ask of you, we do not promote on social media just because I do not have an account on any social media platforms other than YouTube. So I depend on your support by sharing this channel and also inviting other sisters, family, friends by word of mouth to join us. So last week's show, last week's show, who watched the recording or who was here for the show last week? Wasn't it super informative? Wasn't it just really informative? Last week, we had a special guest, Dr. Michael Williams. Um, he's an upper cervical chiropractor of Williams Upper Cervical Chiropractic, his, his um, clinic. And what a very informative show it was. So if you haven't seen it, please go back and watch last week's show. There's so much valuable information that I don't want you to miss. So I, I would like to take this time also to apologize for the technical difficulties last Sunday. I didn't realize how bad the video was starting off because on my end, as I'm watching it, everything was nice and clear and crisp. But you all were telling me that it was it was blurry, and it wasn't until I went back and watched uh, I went back and watched it that I realized, oh my goodness, <laughs> it really was blurry. But it did clear up after maybe about five minutes or or so. Um, so thank you all for your patience with that. I hope tonight, um, is it is is the video good tonight? Is it good? Please give me a thumbs up. Because once again, on my end, it looks pretty clear. It looks pretty clear. But let me know if we're having any issues whatsoever. So Althea said it was very informative. Yes, yes, yes. Also, I need to make a correction. So while I was watching, I was playing back the show and watching it, I realized that I had made an error. I had referred to the PRP, the treatment that I got on my neck, as protein-rich plasma. I am so sorry for that error. It is actually platelet-rich plasma therapy. Platelet-rich plasma therapy. Once again, I apologize for the error. So that being said, this brings us to tonight's show. Are you all ready for another enlightening broadcast? Are you ready? Are you ready for tonight's show? Because I'm telling you, this is going to be another very information packed um, show. We've been enlightened and informed on so many health and wellness topics that if applied, they can improve our well-being um, in the previous broadcast. Haven't we, haven't we been just engaged in some really informative um, topics? Well, guess what? Tonight will prove to be another one of those nights. Welcome to April. Welcome to the second Sunday in April alternative and complementary medicine and therapy month. So every, every Sunday this month, we will be focusing on topics pertaining to alternative and complementary medicine and therapy, such as chiropractic, like we did last week. Um, Althea said it's, it gets blurry now and then. We're still having the issues with, with it being blurry. Oh my goodness. I will have to find out what's what's going on with this. Anyone else having issues? Please post and let me know if you're having any issues with, with the blurriness as well. So we've been, we will be delving into chiropractic care as we did last week, massage therapy, herbal medicine, aromatherapy, and and more. So tonight. We welcome another very special guest that I'm going to bring in, Sister Patricia McCoy. Let me bring her in. 
right now. Sister Patricia, so good to see you. Shalom. Shalom. How are you? I'm so blessed. How are you? I am blessed by the best. <laughs> Thank well, you. You are so welcome. So let me just give a brief introduction. And then I would like for you to jump in and tell us more about yourself. And, and we'll go right in. So Sister Patricia McCoy, she's a colon hydrotherapist, fitness instructor, certified holistic health and wellness coach, and certified supplement specialist. And we are so very blessed to have our sister on the show to educate us on the benefits of colon hydrotherapy as it relates to detoxification and waste removal, balancing the microbiome, improved digestive function, and the brain-gut connection. Althea says it, we can barely see your face. Once again, Sister, Sister Patricia, on your end, how is everything looking? Yeah, it's, it's fading in and out. It's, it's blurry. Why it's, is this? It's and once like, again, on my end, everything looks crisp. Everything looks so clear. This is so bizarre. It could be the internet connection. Is it just my face that's blurry, Althea? Anyone else want to chime in and, and give us some information about the video? Please chime in. Let me know what you're seeing. Please post a comment. I, she says she can see your face clearly. And this is exactly what happened last week as well. Hmm. This is exactly what happened last week. I don't know what's going on with with my um, my internet here. Well, yeah, it's, it's, and last week it cleared up after about five minutes, but it's not clearing up. It's, it's, it hasn't cleared up. Is it getting any better? No, it's really in, intermittent. It's intermittent. And yes, and it's still blurry. It's still blurry right now. Mm -hmm. Really blurry or... Um, I can yeah I can make out can your you face. Can you make out my my face? Yes. Should we continue or should should we should I try um, rebooting or or something? Um, probably so. I mean to clear it up because it's it's just real staticky. Is there high winds in my area? There, there, there's some uh, wind. Yeah, there's some wind. That could be the, the yeah, problem. Yeah, that could be it. Yeah, I'm looking outside right now and it, it's pretty windy out there. Mm. It's pretty windy. Yeah, so I don't know if rebooting it's gonna help much. Right, right. Yeah, it's, I'm, I'm <laughs> okay. Wow, Aww. we haven't had any of these issues um, until last week. Oh, this is, wow. Was it windy last week? Last week. Or was that when it was storming or you had bad weather? We no? had bad weather, but that wasn't until Monday night. Monday mm -hmm. night, the weather got bad. But we have been having some high winds. And I'm looking right now outside, and it's 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 windy. Mm. Oh okay. boy. Okay. Well, let's let's push through. You you think? Um, I'm fine. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> um, no. I I really want it to to be clear. 
Yes. I mean, you can, if you want, you can uh, reboot it if everybody is okay with that and just kind of. Um, we can hear you loud and clear, so that's okay. Continue. Okay. Well, let's let's continue. Okay. And I will I will deal with my um, internet provider and see if there's something that that can be done because I have such a high speed. It shouldn't. It really shouldn't. The winds really shouldn't be doing this. But oh well. So <laughs> let's move forward. Let's continue. We've given we've given that enough energy, and <laughs> we're just going to keep keep pushing forward. I will so, tell you one thing, um, yes. sis, I used to work for the, um, the cable company. Oh, okay. <laughs> so it could be a loose, um, the wiring coming into your, into the home, connecting to the modem. Uh, you may want to make oh. sure those fittings are secured because if there's leakage, then you'll get this type of distortion as well. Oh, from the outside. From the outside. Well, yeah, well, it's coming into the wiring that's coming into the home. Okay. There's a cable that comes into the home from the wall and it connects to your modem. You want to make sure those fittings from the wall are secured and also okay. the fittings on your modem is secured because sometimes those get loose. Right. Um, that's yes. something to, to consider. Let me let me do this for a minute here. Let me let me um, go out. I'm not going to shut everything down. I'm just going to go check some some of the wiring. So I'm going yes. to remove myself from the video for a minute. Okay. And let me just check and see if there's something here that I can troubleshoot real quick. Okay. okay? Sounds good. Can you all still see me? No. Oh. <laughs> well, maybe we should have a little girl talk. So I, 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 I'm in uh, Rawlett, Althea. I think you're the main one here. So we'll start with you. Where, where are you located? Oh, wow. North Carolina. Were you able to attend the Passover in North Carolina? I'm assuming there's like a delay if you're responding. Okay. Oh, I'm back. Is it any different? No. Well, <laughs> <laughs> let me see. Can I? Oh, let me expand my. It, yeah, it's still um, a little blurry. So I'm looking. I, I have my mobile phone here. I'm looking at us on the mobile phone. It's a little blurry. Yeah, um, but we can make it through. But we can make it through. Yes, for sure. I, I think I think we're okay. We're okay. At least we know that I'm here. So exactly. <laughs> let's push forward. So sisters out there, please help me give a very enthusiastic welcome to Sister Patricia for her willingness to join us on Tea Time with Sheba Royalty to share her knowledge and her expertise in the area of colon hydrotherapy. Welcome, sis. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I'm so excited to be a part of this great mission. 
ministry that you have, educating us on health and wellness, the natural way. So thank you for the invitation. Absolutely, all praises. Mm -hmm. Thank you for accepting. So you are now in the driver's seat, my sister. Okay. You are now in the driver's seat. Tonight we're talking about that 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 link, right? Um, the the gut brain connection. Exactly. Yes. So of course, over the years, I've been doing. Um, I've been a colon hydrotherapist since 2018, and it's it's really funny how I just kind of rolled in to that role never in a million years that I ever think that I would be doing such a thing. <laughs> well, wow. a, a friend of mine, um, she was a um, colon cancer survivor. Mm. She had colon cancer stage four and uh, the doctors had sent her home, told her there was nothing else they, they can do for her get her affairs in order. So she went to, um, she went to Mexico and got treated where she was receiving colonics four times a day, oh, wow. juicing, you know, plant-based or actually it was raw. Everything was raw mm -hmm. and was able to create an alkaline environment in her body. Therefore, the cancer could not thrive. And so that was about 23 years ago. And I did similar, but not to the extreme, you know, as far as going to Tijuana, but when they found cancer in my breast, I too, I didn't know anything about colonics. I've heard about colonics, but I just never had, you know, engaged in that type of therapy. However, I was doing coffee enemas uh, as a part of my treatment. And so with the juicing, the juicing was to help me get the nutrients to my cells and the tissue so the body could repair itself. And then as I was detoxifying, I was doing coffee enemas mm. multiple times throughout the day, you know, and as a result, that yielded, they, they actually, the doctors actually wanted to um, treat me with chemotherapy. And I asked the physician, my oncologist, I just told him, give me 30 days, give me 30 days mm -hmm. to, to think about this because I knew I had a plan that I wasn't going to do chemotherapy. So I got introduced to a practitioner and we re reset my body in 30 days with the wow. enemas, juicing, raw, you know, everything was raw vegetable. There was no such thing as breakfast, lunch, or dinner. And the day that they, I got admitted into the hospital, they were going to administer a port. And I just kindly asked the physician, I said, you know, we're going to hold off on that. I said, I got a good feeling I'm not going to need that thing. <laughs> and... <clears throat> After that, after they did the surgery, it turns out that the cancer was, it was fast growing. However, the surgeon, she looks at me and she goes, you know, it was fast growing, but it looks like something just stopped it in its tracks. <laughs> and I knew what that something was. Right. You know, but they're not really open to holistic and natural healing. And, mm -hmm. and so... Um, with that being said, I started kind of um, doing my own researching and connecting more with the holistic community, which is how I landed the job. I became really good friends with the owner and she reached out to me and she goes, I really need some help. And me just being the person that I am, I was just like, well, whatever you need, you know, tell me what you need. I want you to do colonics. Then I was like, wow. Well, what does all of that entail? <laughs> and, you know, I, I was just like, oh, that sounds like a dirty job. <laughs> <laughs> but, but once I really began to understand the benefits of colonics, 
and the brain and the gut connection and how those two play a part in how we eliminate how our digestive system functions or does not function. Mm -hmm. I just became so intrigued. Wow. And how long ago was that? That was 2018. Wow. So it's been what, six years? Yeah. Wow. Six years of, of you know, doing colonics. A lot of the, um, a lot of our clients, you know, it just varies, you know, on what the person is trying to accomplish. Some of the, the clients that come in, they are doing like a parasite cleanse or a liver cleanse. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so they just want to rid themselves of any, you know, toxins that are just looming around in their, in their colon. Mm -hmm. uh, and then we have individuals who are dealing with chronic illnesses that are coming on a repeated, like a regular basis as a way to heal the body because of the lack of hydration, you know, that is flowing through the colon, the lack of nutrients, their body is just really trying to heal. Mm -hmm. so they're not able to eliminate properly. Okay. So the col you know, the colonics come into place to, to really help with that, um, that process. And I've seen um, several people, actually, there's one lady that I, I work on every week. She comes every week. She's been doing it for a year consistently, a year and a half consistently and I have Ooh. literally watched her um heal or get better from 98 pounds she came in at 98 pounds and we would do the colonics and just a series you know of treatment for her but the colonic was one of the tools that we used to help with her wellness journey and now she's about 135 pounds wow. <laughs> and well isn't that amazing? What, what was her diet? Did she have a diagnosis when she came to see you? Well, it started with COVID. She, okay. she said she remembered getting COVID or yeah, she remembered getting COVID. And the next thing she knew, um, she couldn't swallow. Her esophagus had started closing in on her mm. and um, she had calcium deposits all in her, her brain. And um, she became real sensitive to water. Like if she touched water, she her skin would just break out and just crack. And so, yeah, it attacked her, her nervous system really bad. And she's still having neurological issues. However, um, she's nowhere uh, like she used to be. She's come a long way. So... The doctors weren't able to really pinpoint what her what the illness was, but mm -hmm. it all stopped when she had got um, COVID. Okay. All of these flare ups. Okay. And yes. when you say regular regular colonics, what does that look like? Is it does it differ per patient per client? Um, the colonics you are the same. Once a month or how? Right. It really how depends on work? what their, it really depends on, yeah, it just depends on their situation. Uh, like I said, some people will come in for weight loss. And so if it's a weight loss patient, then we recommend uh, a session two times out of the month. If we have a new client that comes in and they just really struggle with bloating constipation, even diarrhea, and we're not able to get a really good movement on the system. And the system, what that system looks like is the client is laying, is reclined on a table mm -hmm. and we do have to insert a speculum. Okay. And at one end of the speculum, now this one is called the closed system. They have a closed system and then they have an open system. But for new patients, we typically recommend that they do the closed system because we're able to guide them through, you know, the session. Okay. And so on end, one end of that speculum, there's a water line that's going in. It's filtered water. 
and it's going in and it's hydrating the colon. And at the other end of that speculum is a waistline. Hmm. So as the, the colon is hydrated and pressure begins to build, we have a control system where we're able to relieve that pressure and then the body is able to go into peristalsis. It activates and then the person is able to eliminate. Okay. But we do have cases where we have to get deal with the, the trapped air because the trapped air is one of the main issues that's keeping the person from being able to eliminate. So people get the get constipation confused with gas because they're thinking they're constipated. I can't go to the restroom when in all actuality is just trapped air that's keeping the stool from making. Yeah. Yeah. There's some, there's, there's a, a, a noise there. Do you hear like something rubbing something? It's could it, no. No. Yeah, there's a there's a, a noise. It sounds like something is rubbing against something. No. Hmm. Okay. All right. Well, no. Okay, is moving. it loud? <laughs> it 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 it's kind of it is kind of loud. Really? But it's intermittent. It's intermittent. I wonder if um you, are you wearing like me? Are you wearing some headphones? No. She says, oh, she said it sounds like a chair moving. Let yeah. me see. No, I am. Okay. Okay. Wow. <laughs> the blurriness and then the chair moving. <laughs> All right. We'll continue. It, it went away. It went. It stopped. So let's see. Maybe. Maybe it's gone. Okay. Okay. I'm, I'm sorry. So where oh, were we? Oh, yeah. So we were just um, talking about the trapped air. Some people get mm -hmm. the trapped air and constipation confused. And then some people even think, you know, that they have a lot of weight to lose. But once we're finished with the session, which is 45 minutes to an hour, mm -hmm. then they realize that it really wasn't um, actual weight, but it was just trapped air that, Yeah that was causing, you know, all of this grief and they walk out, some walk out two pounds lighter, <laughs> so even three. Wow. Talk about a weight lifted, right? <laughs> wow. Right. I've heard about colonics. Literally. Yeah, exactly. I've <laughs> heard about colonics, but never, never experienced it. So this, this is pretty interesting. Um, can someone overdo it with um, with colonics? Is there is there a, a, where you can say, okay, you've been doing this for too long, or you're doing this too often, and what would determine that? Well, the one thing that and and yes, the answer to your question is yes. And the reason I say that is because even though we are able to remove that toxic waste from the large intestine, you're also diminishing the electrolytes that's in your body. And it can disturb the good bacteria that's in the right, that's in the gut. And so some people can overdo it, uh, especially if they're not following a, a good regimen or have a protocol in place where they're actually restoring the electrolytes and making sure they have their probiotics. Mm -hmm. And I really like the uh, video that you showed, that you shared about how to make your own homemade kombucha mm -hmm. because that has a lot of probiotics, pre and probiotics. So it, some people can overdo it where you know, it will actually begin to um, disturb the lining of the colon of the large intestine, because that's the main area that we're working on. And so when that lining begins to shed, now you don't have that protective barrier. I can see, I can see that. So once a month, 
for most people or less frequent I, for, I for, say, for your average person? For the average person, you can do it uh, based on the seasons every quarter. Okay. And that's with a, you know, a regular, a, a healthy diet where you are actually, you know, eliminating properly once or tw- two to three times, depending on how many meals you have a day, mm-hmm. anywhere from one to three bowel movements a day. So if you're regular like that, regular like that, mm-hmm. then for maintenance, it would be quarterly. Quarterly. Okay. Yes. If it's weight loss. So if, if a person is really you know, on a roll with shedding those unwanted pounds, then that right there would be a once a month recommendation because as as they're shedding the weight, they're also releasing toxins in the body. And if those toxins are not released from the body, then the body sees it as a foreign object and then the weight comes back on. Okay. So once they once they get to their let's say they get to their ideal weight, at that point they go on maybe the quarterly after that. Right, that's correct. So quarterly, okay. I even have some people that come in every six months, and 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 you can do that. You can do it quarterly. You can do it every six months. You can in between that time, you can actually be doing coffee enemas at home. You have people that do coffee enemas. They do the chlorophyll enemas. The chlorophyll enemas are really, really good for people who um, have issues with bowel, actual bowel obstructions, Mm -hmm. because the chlorophyll is able to be absorbed into the bloodstream. And there's a healing mechanism that takes place with the chlorophyll. I've had people with parasites that will come in and they will do the colonic and then they go home and they do garlic flushes, enemas wow. to kill off parasites. Wow. Okay. Yeah. And if I've you've never heard of that one, the garlic enemas. Oh yeah. I, I hadn't either until, you know, <laughs> you just, you just hear all kinds of things. You learn wow. all kinds of new things, but We've had people that are doing parasitic cleanse, parasite cleanses. Mm -hmm. And for them, yes, once a week for the first four four weeks. And then they taper off to two times a month, depending on how how high of an activity Mm -hmm. they have going on, either in the gut, in their liver. I mean, it really just depends on, on the individual or the situation. Okay. So when you do, when, let's say someone is dealing with parasites, Mm -hmm. when you do the colonic, do, do you at that time while you're doing the colonic see a, an abundance of the adult um, parasites during that process? Does it, tell me what that, what that looks like. So when we're doing colonics in this field, we can't make claims to parasites that they are actually expelling parasites. Oh, wow. Yes, without a stool sample. Okay. And and so, but off the record, there have, I mean, when when I've had several people who have done a liver cleanse mm-hmm. and I've seen parasites. As long as mm-hmm. so the tube is probably about this long, the viewing tube. Right. And so I have seen parasites. Okay. But you, you're, you're not allowed to call it a parasite exactly. without, without the test. Without the test. I see. Yes. But it's so yeah. obvious when you. It's obvious. It is very <laughs> obvious. It yeah. does not look like stool. Yeah. Yeah, you know what we know what a parasite looks like. Yes, (laughs) yes. But I I, I get it. And and you have to be able to identify what type of parasite it is, what type of worm, whether it's a roundworm, a tapeworm. Right. Right? Yes, yes. And there's 
our machine doesn't have the device, but it is, we are, I mean, there's a way to, you know, grab that sample during the session where there's a little chamber that will, you know, we can open and capture that specimen and send it off to the lab. So it just really depends on the makeup of the facility, if they are willing to offer, you know, that extended service mm -hmm. to test for parasites. But we all know that if there are parasites present, then you make adjustments to your diet mm -hmm. and they will come out, you know, because they can't, they can't handle that environment. Environment. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So you will expel them. Yes. And for those who are coming in that are on the parasite cleanse anyway, more than likely they have been diagnosed. They've had stool samples tested and they're told this is what they're dealing with. So they already know for the most part, right? For the most those part. that are coming in, yes, those who are coming in um on that type of a cleanse. But I'm right. sure that you've had others that came in just for a colonic, not realizing that that's one of the things that they're dealing with. Exactly. One in particular, and, and I see it with a lot when um, women are getting the um, the injections. What is that called? Mm -hmm. The um, Botox. Mm -hmm. Oh, the Botox. Okay. Yes. Yes. I've seen several women who have gotten Botox injections or, you know, facelifts or cosmetic, you know, uh, procedures and their body is just so toxic. And I've, I've seen that with, you know, several women who've had those type of procedures oh, wow. where parasites are present. And there's a there's other um, it's very interesting. I had a young lady that had severe eczema and she was um, doing a gallbladder and liver cleanse. Mm -hmm. And we never seen stool. But what was coming out was the stones. From her her gallbladder. Mm -hmm. And it literally looked like pebbles, just streams of pebbles, just running, you know, down a river. So say, for instance, you were walking alongside a river and you just see these little pebbles rolling. And that's what and, and she's doing better. She's not completely, you know, clear of the eczema. Mm -hmm. But the the amount of itching has subsided for her. Wow. And and that's what most people don't realize. And we talked about this in one of the previous shows as well, mm -hmm. is the gut. This is where so many illnesses manifest, right? Come right. From here. And if you clean the gut up, the rashes, the acne, the eczema, these are things that clear up, right? And so that is and even, even mental illnesses. So that brings us to the gut brain connection. Right. Talk about that. So with the, with the gut brain connection, we have the, you know, the vagus nerve. Mm -hmm. We have the vagus nerve. So the vagus nerve has two divisions. You have the sympathetic and then you have the parasympathetic. Right? Sympathetic is always fight or flight. Gotta do, always on the run. Boop, 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 boop. The parasympathetic is where you're in that rested state and that's where the body is able to actually heal itself. But I would say about 90% of the population of individuals are constantly in this fight or flight. State. <laughs> the stressful world that we live in, right? <laughs> exactly, exactly. So when I'm having a conversation with my clients that are on the on my table and and they they're complaining about, you know, having trapped air or um, having to drink coffee in order for them to eliminate. And so we start having the conversation where I ask them, OK, so when you're at work, you know, I ask them, what's your occupation? They'll tell me what their occupation is. 
So when it's lunchtime, do you do you stand up? Do you take a break? Do you go sit down and eat? No, I'm eating, you know, at the same time. Well, if you're in fight or flight, remember that vagus nerve runs into the colon. And so it sends that colon a signal that there's something more important that needs to be attended to. So if you're eating and you're in that fight or flight state, now the peristalsis is constricted. So now your food is not being able to digest. The body's going, I don't know what to do because something else is requiring my attention. Therefore, even though you're even eating, even if you're eating nutritious, you, nutritional food mm-hmm. and <clears throat> you're quote unquote multitasking, you really only can focus on one thing at a time, right? right. <laughs> but if you're in that fight or flight mode and you're eating, the body is focusing on what's most important and it's unable to produce the enzymes that the body mm-hmm. needs to break down the food, right? And the body's not able to distribute the nutrients to the appropriate organs of the body. And then that's where your chronic illnesses begin to set in. Right. Because the distribution center has been interrupted. Exactly. And and we... (laughs) It's so interesting how our shows have been just linked one to eat, one to the next, to the next, to the next. All of our shows lately, Mm -hmm. you can look back and see how that previous show now ties into this show. We did a show back in, I think it was December. Was it December or January on Mindful Eating? Mm. And these are some of the things that we talked about is when you're eating, you have to be mindful to be present for that meal. You cannot enjoy the meal. You can't taste the meal if you're over here doing this and doing that. Right. Right. And you have to take time to really chew your food until it's liquid so that it is now available to to be properly digested. And so these are some of the things that we talked about earlier. So it, it's, wow. like I said, it's so interesting. That if is. you go back and watch watch the previous shows, mm-hmm. how we talked about hydration, we talked about water. Um, so many of the things that we're talking about right now, mental health, mental health, I think was back in December. Mm. Or, or or November was mental health. And now they're recognizing that so many of these mental illnesses, the gut, right? <laughs> the serotonin. The, Cortisol levels. All, all of that. Right. The, the pancreas, insulin, all of those things. All of exactly. exactly. So if your gut is not functioning properly, it's very difficult for the rest of the body to to function. Exactly. And you know, sis, there's there's something about um, when I was reading on the intermittent fasting, mm-hmm. you know, and they have the um, the 16, it's that 16 hours of intermittent fasting and then eight hours, you know, that you have that window to eat. Eat. Mm-hmm. And... Mm, One of the most interesting things that I found out about intermittent fasting and the colon is the colon, it takes 16 hours to actually process the food that we've eaten, that we have eaten for the day. And so, yeah, I I was just I was um, doing some research and I just found that really interesting. So if we are within that eight hour window, ooh, something's trying to there's a bug in my face. So mm-hmm. in that eight hour window, you know, I when I'm with my patients and I'm my clients and I'm asking them, you know, where this is where the coaching piece kicks in. You know, Mm -hmm. where we're doing an assessment and they're like, I eat really, really good. 
So I, I ask them, well, what do you eat? And, you know, they'll start out with their breakfast in the morning and then I'll have my protein at lunch and then I'll have, you know, my other my another protein at dinner. And so we start doing the math and I just break it down. Well, what kind of protein are you eating? Well, I had, you know, fajitas or I had a steak at lunch. Well, with the steak, it takes five hours to break down, if it even breaks down. If it breaks down, yes. Right. So I've had a steak at lunch and then at dinner. So you got five hours. Say that was 12 o'clock, 12 to five. And then you're going to eat at six Mm o'clock and you have more protein. Say, for instance, is salmon. That's another four hours that the body is working on breaking down just that protein. Mm -hmm. And then you lay down and then you wake up. Say, for instance, you lay down at seven o'clock, you wake up at six o'clock. Well, the body, the, the large intestine hasn't even had time to break down what you ate the day before. Right. And now you're piling something else on it. So the, the intestines never get a break. They never get to go into that rest, rested state so it can process properly. And, and how so, many of us go to bed at seven o'clock, like you said? How many people cut off eating at seven o'clock? Exactly. We're still snacking into the night. Right, right. And disturbing the whole process. And so when you were talking about mindful, mindful eating, mm-hmm. that's part of the process. That's part of it, exactly. Yes. Exactly, and, mm-hmm. that, and then that's where now the Mediterranean diet comes into play, right? Yeah. That's another show that we had was on mm-hmm. the Mediterranean diet. Mm-hmm. That's where that comes into play because red meat, especially because that's the hardest thing for your body to digest. Right. Great protein, but it is, it's very difficult to, to digest. So for people who eat red meat every day, um, how much rest is their, their gut getting? How much of that food, that, that meat is actually being digested? Right. And there are so many, so many people who are on the SAB diet, the standard American diet, mm-hmm. who do not have regular bowel movements. And I talked about this where I had patients that would tell me, well, you know, I I have a bowel movement every three days or so. Well, how how many meals have you had in those three days? And where is all of that waste? And what is all of that waste doing to your body? Because the gut is still is still extracting whatever it can out of that food, because guess what? The, the peristalsis is still going on, even if exactly. it's not at the, if it's not at a at its maximum level, it's still going on. So what is it extracting now? It's no longer nutrients. Right. It's now extracting toxins and distributing the toxins to every part of your body. And you're wondering why it's the constant headache, the constant brain fog, the mm-hmm. rashes, the the stuffy nose. Your body now becomes not just toxic, there's so much inflammation. Right. Because the gut is not, it's not eliminating properly. Mm-hmm. It's not healing. And the, the cultures that we need in the gut in order for it to function well, they're not there. Exactly. Because we're not feeding them. We're not feeding the, the gut We're not feeding the probiotics, first of all, with the prebiotics to keep them alive. Exactly. Exactly. And plus the fiber, right? The fiber, exactly. Yeah, the fiber that is just like that broom that's designed to go in and sweep that excess waste. Anything that is left over from the nutrients and the vitamins and, you know, the minerals that we get from our food, if we're doing whole foods. 
-hmm. anything that's left over, that fiber is, its job is to sweep it through the colon, you know, to its exit point. However, if we're not consuming enough water to keep it hydrated, and when I'm, when I'm sharing with my, um, with my clients is the intestine is like a muscle. Mm -hmm. So it's constantly contracting Contracting. and any moisture that it gets, it's going to contract that moisture. So if we don't have enough moisture, if we're Mm -hmm. not staying hydrated, then what's happening to that stool? It's dehydrating. Dehydrating. Mm -hmm. And then it sticks to the walls of Mm -hmm. the colon and you, like you said, it might stick there for three days and you might have a good day when you ate something good and then it's able to move. The bowels are able to move. But now you have that toxic waste that's just sitting on <laughs> on the walls of your colon. And that's the beautiful thing about the colonics is when we're doing the colonic, the first elimination, the activation is, you know, we get that stool that's kind of like in the... Um, and uh, right at the base of the rectum, we'll get that. I think that's the, um, what part is that? The diadem? Uh, oh man, that just, it just slipped my mind. But right before the rectum, you have this real hold. It's kind of like a holding tape that um, is, is waiting for elimination. <laughs> the what? Oh, the sigmoid. The sigmoid colon? Yes that portion of the colon. And so it's holding, it's like a holding tank and it's waiting, you know, it's turn to, to evacuate. But if there's not mm-hmm. enough, what I love about the colonics is when we're, we're doing the colonic, I, I do a gentle massage. I'm gonna see if I can stand up and show our viewers. And this is something you can do at okay. home is, let me see if I can stand up. You probably just see my, my tummy, okay? Okay. what you do is I I send them home and this is the ascending. So this is the right side, right? Mm -hmm. And you can do gentle massages on the ascending colon because this is right in here is your small intestines. And then you have the ileocecal valve where the stool just dumps into and then it goes into the ascending colon. So I have them massage. Now, when they're on the table, I'm doing the massaging for them. And then you come across to the the transverse. And sometimes if your food is not broken down and you can feel right here and there's a little pain, that's either trapped air from you not drinking Mm -hmm. enough water or you're operating in that fight or flight. And so the way you move it is you just kind of drag, you know, you just kind of pull across, across that transverse. And now we're going to the descending. And with the Mm -hmm. descending, that's where you begin to activate the parasolis. And you can move that around. And so anybody that's dealing with constipation or, or gas, you can do that little exercise at home. Uh, And so what I was saying, what I love about the colonics is we're able to give that person release with gentle massages, and then we'll introduce coffee to the session. And what the coffee does is it goes in, the, the caffeine is absorbed through the bloodstream, and then it activates the liver. And when the liver is activated, then it allows the liver to dump toxins into the gallbladder for those who have gallbladders. And then the gallbladder is stimulated and it begins to move some of that old fecal matter that's been trapped around the walls of the colon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. And so for people who are really wanting to you know, address that issue, then they will come once a week because they're on a mission and they understand that even though they, you know, they had a really good session that first time we got the the colon moving and, you know, they had a really good flow, but those who are really, really serious about getting that gut health 
together, they will come in once a week. And then we do run into very dense pieces of stool that's just mm-hmm. been trapped. Yeah. Yeah. And, so- and I've, I've heard it even being described as it becomes almost like rubberized, kind of rubbery. Does oh, it- yeah. Does that sound right? It sounds, you have the rubbery and then also the ones that has been really sitting there for a while, Mm -hmm. it literally comes out crumbled. Crumbled, okay. It's so dried out that it's- It's it's so dried out, it's just crumbled. Wow. Yeah, and and the rubbery type, it it has a, it doesn't have your natural, you know, form because when when you go to the bathroom, when you Mm -hmm. evacuate, it should be, you know, we always ask, is it soft serve or is it pebbles? You know, exactly. <laughs> what is it? So it should come out as soft serve. Mm-hmm. But, um, but the rubbery part, it comes out with mucus attached mm-hmm. to it. And that's because of inflammation. inflammation. Mm-hmm. And where does the inflammation come from? It's the toxins right. that have been building up inside. And then it begins to wear on the large intestine, on the lining of the large intestine. Okay. Yeah. Wow, this, so, is, this is interesting stuff. Oh my yeah, goodness. Yeah. There, and, there, go ahead. Oh, I just wanted to touch one more on the brain and the gut. You yes, know, what we yes, were talking yes. about learning how to listen to your body, listen to how your body responds to the foods that you eat. And the only way that you can listen to your body is when you're eating, you're you're seeing how your body is responding to that particular Mm -hmm. food. For instance, say for instance, you ate some um, uh, lentils. Lentils are good, right? Mm -hmm. But- Not for everyone, right? (laughs) Exactly. So you eat the lentils and all of a sudden your belly starts swelling. Mm -hmm. That's your body telling you, I'm not ready for lentils. Not today, maybe another day. Mm -hmm. Maybe you don't have enough enzymatic, you know, activity going on inside the body. Or you might start itching or you might get a headache. Mm -hmm. That brain and gut connection, your body is telling you, you know what? Um, this is not suitable for me today. Maybe another day. <laughs> right. There's some things that you have to address before you introduce me to this food. Correct. Right? That's correct. Some I like the way that you put that. that. <laughs> yes, that's good. That's good. I like yeah, that. Yeah, that's your body telling you that. This, this. Yeah. That's very we're not, good. We're, not, we're really not ready. You address these things and then you can bring it back later on. Let's let's give me some time. Right, exactly. <laughs> deal, deal with the issues. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, because that, right, your body is talking to you, it's telling you these things. And and so many people ignore that. Yeah. Or we go out, we go out and buy stuff to mask it to mask whatever the issue is, right? Mm-hmm. What kind you of things out, do you think they go out like, and like buy? Like Beano, mm-hmm. like Beano, um, that's right. not fixing the problem, it kind of masks the issue, right? Mm-hmm. Unlike the kombucha, uh, with the kombucha, what you're getting is you're getting the healthy cultures. Exactly. That, that your gut needs. It's not masking it, it's actually healing. Mm -hmm. so there are things over the counter that we can use like i said like lactate the pills right because you're having issues with milk well what what is what's the issue here exactly what's what's the problem what's causing this Mm -hmm. so we have to start really listening to our bodies and leaning more towards healing finding finding the root cause of whatever it is and addressing right. the root cause rather than just getting a band-aid and putting it on there oh i want some ice cream today so let me get this today <laughs> to, you know <laughs> yes and then you suffer <laughs> right or like you said the lentils let me get some beano 
yeah. to make sure that I can eat the lentils. Figure <laughs> out what is the problem. Why is it that my body cannot break down these lentils? Right. What, what, what is it lacking? Yes. So that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to get to the place where we are healing our bodies and not just putting a band-aid. Imagine how many band-aids we would have, right? Oh if we my had a for this. And this. <laughs> <laughs> Look like a patchwork quilt. Exactly. <laughs> we'll probably be a big roll of tape. <laughs> I wanted to add to the probiotic is as we age, we don't produce as much enzymes, enzymes. in our saliva. Mm -hmm. And so that's where the digestive enzymes come into play. And I eat a lot of them. I mean, I have to do a lot of digestive enzymes. Mm -hmm. And, and the that's reason why true. is because as, um, I was always a sickly child. And so I was on a lot of medication and it really disturbed my microbiome, mm. you know, in my gut. And um, I know I have a, a, a good go. Yes. Antibiotics, steroids. Oh. I mean, oh, wow. yes. And all praises that I... Some, I mean, I just kind of fell into this. Never imagined in a million years that I would be having these kind of conversations. Isn't 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 he amazing? Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. I, I was just like, wow. I never knew I was, you know, I never even foreseen myself being in the holistic realm. But it's amazing how he will give you the tools for yourself, That's and we in turn have to share that with others. Well, sometimes we have to go through these things. There, there's that strange noise. Really? Are you hearing it? It's, it's like there's something moving. Something just, just keeps rubbing. And, and like my, my sister was saying, it sounds like a chair moving or something, something scraping up against something. It's just wow. Bizarre. I am like <laughs> sitting as still as I can. <laughs> Do you, is there anything, a cord that's maybe rubbing against the microphone or anything? Is there something? No. Let no? Me see. no, there's the a fan. Oh, let me yeah. see. Maybe, maybe you think it's the fan? Let me go turn the fan off and see if that's it. Okay. Okay. My what, what does your microphone look like? I don't have a, I'm just using my computer. Oh, okay. Should I put a headset on? But right now there's nothing. Maybe it's when you move, maybe I, I <laughs> I'll sit still. <laughs> no, this is this is it's really strange. It says it, my sister when was she saying, moves her hand or something her, when she moves her hand or something. Okay, I'm gonna sit on my hands then. <laughs> Don't do that. <laughs> That's funny because I'm. It's there's nothing close. Yeah, by. some of these things are just so sensitive. Just so sensitive. Mm. Um, Sister Paula had made um, a, a statement earlier about my my video. It's still blurry, isn't it? Is it still blurry? Just slightly. Slightly, she was saying maybe it's the um, maybe it's the lens on my camera, so that that could be it as well. Oh, okay. That could be it. Are as you guys well. still hearing the rattling on my end? Right now, no. Okay. Right. <laughs> okay. So you've got rattling and I've got blurring, <laughs> but we're gonna keep this going. There are a couple of articles that I want to I want to share. Okay. And one is from Atlant Health Wellness Center. Mm -hmm. And this one, let's see, what's the name of this one? Let's see. It's this one. Yes. 
So this one is from Atlant Health Wellness Center, the vital link between gut health and overall well-being. A lot of the things that you you brought out is in this article. Mm. And it says here, unlocking longevity, the vital link between gut health and overall well-being. It says in the pursuit of health and fu and fulfilling life, it's essential to recognize the pivotal role that gut health plays in shaping our overall well-being and, and longevity. In the year 2024, optimizing gut health has become a cornerstone of proactive self-care, which you were talking about, right? With various modalities gaining popularity. Hmm. Among these, Colon hydrotherapy stands out as a powerful and sought after option. Let's delve into the intricate connection between a healthy colon and our broader health, exploring why prioritizing gut health is more crucial than ever. And I had no idea. I, I pulled up these articles last night. And mm. it says here in the year 2024. <laughs> wow. Well, look at there. Look at the, the gut as the epicenter of well-being. Our gut, often referred to as the second brain, is home to a complex ecosystem of microorganisms, collectively known as microbiome. This mm -hmm. bustling community of bacteria, viruses, and fun fungi influences not just our digestive health, but also our immune system, mental well-being, and even the regulation of hormones. Number one, microbiome and immune system harmony. The gut is a significant player in the body's immune defense. A diverse and balanced microbiome acts as a shield against harmful invaders, preventing infections and illnesses. Credible studies such as those conducted by the National Institute of Health, the NIH, emphasize the symbiotic relationship between a healthy gut and a robust immune system. So it's necessary to have a healthy gut in order to have a good immune system. Right. Two, mental health and the gut-brain axis. The gut-brain axis, a bi-directional communication system between the gut and the brain highlights the profound impact of gut health on mental well-being, research from Psychology Today and Harvard Health published in, reveals that imbalances in the gut microbiome can contribute to conditions like anxiety and depression because those hormones that are um, in, in, in the gut, if, if they're not able to be properly distributed, to get to the brain, how how can you not be anxious or depressed? There's an imbalance, right. a hormonal imbalance there. And mm -hmm. so a lot of times, once again, talking about um, putting a Band-Aid on it, you go in and you get started on an antidepressant mm. and wonder why you're on an antidepressant for 20, 30 years for an issue that was a temporary situation and now you are on a permanent fix for an issue that was temporary mm, right and so many people yes. cannot get off of these antidepressants because why we're not addressing the issue the gut the gut problem Number exactly three, hormonal harmony the gut also plays a role in hormone regulation Imbalances in the microbiome can disrupt hormonal harmony, potentially leading to issues ranging, ranging from irregular menstrual cycles mm. to mood swings. Reputable sources like Mayo Clinic provides insight into the interconnectedness of gut health and hormonal balance. And once again, how many people are put on Hormone. hormones? Yeah. To, to balance their hormones, right? Rather than going to the source of the problem again. 
So it says here, colon hydrotherapy is a holistic approach to gut health. Colon hydrotherapy, also known as colonic cleanse or colonic irrigation, has emerged as a popular modality in the realm of gut health. This therapy involves a gentle infusion of purified water into the colon, flushing out accumulated waste, toxins, and debris, as you mentioned, as we navigate the complexities of 2024, irrigating colon hydrotherapy into our self-care routines offer a proactive approach to maintaining gut health. Mm. So detoxification and waste removal, a clean colon is fundamental to efficient waste elimination. The accumulation of toxins in the colon can lead to inflammation and hinder the absorption of nutrients. Colon hydrotherapy serves as a gentle detoxification process, promoting the removal of these accumulated substances. Wow, there's that, there's that, that sound is getting even louder. It is? It really is. I'm gonna, let me mute, let me mute this and tell me if you still hear it. See if that, It's gone. It's it. It's gone. Huh? I don't know. Let me. Let me see here. Let me go grab my headphones and see if that will stop it. Okay. So we'll go ahead and continue here. So let's see, where are we? Number two, balancing the microbiome. Colon hydrotherapy contribute to a healthier microbiome by removing stagnant waste that can disrupt the balance of beneficial bacteria. The procedure creates a clean slate, allowing the reintroduction of probiotics and prebiotics that nourish and support the growth of beneficial microbes. Number three, improved digestive function. A sluggish or congested colon can contribute to digestive issues. Col colon hydrotherapy aids in breaking down fecal matter, promoting peristalsis and supporting regular bowel movements. This enhanced digestive function is linked to improved nutrient absorption and overall digestive comfort. So self-care in 2024, prioritizing gut health. That's what we are doing here tonight. We are prioritizing gut health. And we actually started this, was it last month? We started this last month on gut health in an era where self-care has transcended mere indulgence to become a necessity, prioritizing gut health is a foundational step. Incorporating self-care practices that nurture the gut can have profound and lasting effects on overall health and longevity. And here we go again with mindful eating. Cultivating mindfulness in our eating habits is a simple yet impactful form of self-care. To your food, thoroughly savor each bite and be attuned to your body's hunger and fullness cues. Mindful eating fosters healthy digestion and allows you to develop a deeper connection with the nourishment your body receives. Number two, a nutrient-rich diet. These, these are some of the things that we've talked about, like I said, in our previous broadcast. So this is just a recap of so many of the things that we've already um, gone over. So if you haven't seen our previous shows, please go back to the previous shows and get more in-depth information about all of this stuff that's coming out right now. It says here, nutrient-rich diet. Embracing a diet rich in whole, nutrient-dense food is a cornerstone of gut health. Fiber from fruits, vegetables, and whole grains serves as fuel for beneficial gut bacteria. Omega-3 fatty acids found in fish and flax seeds also contribute to a healthy gut environment. Regular exercise. Physical activity isn't just beneficial for cardiovascular health. 
It also supports gut health. Exercise promotes a diversity of the microbiome and helps maintain a healthy balance of gut flora. We also did a show on exercise as well. So we're hitting all of those points. Hydration. Adequate hydration is paramount for a well-functioning digestive system. Water supports the transport of nutrients, aid in, aids in digestion, and helps prevent constipation. It's a simple yet powerful form of self-care for your gut. So looking forward to a holistic approach to longevity. As we navigate the complexities of health in 2024, it's evident that a holistic approach is necessary for promoting longevity and well-being, prioritizing gut health through practices like mindful eating, a nutrient-rich diet, regular exercise, and incorporation of modalities like colon hydrotherapy aligns with the proactive. And it goes into reaching out to their, um, it says here, if you have any questions about how colon hydrotherapy can assist in supporting gastrointestinal health, please contact our wellness center. And I am sure that our sister here, Sister Patricia, can leave some information on how we can reach out to her as well. Yes. So, am I still? Is the noise oh, still there? No, it's gone. Oh, it must be the my microphone on my computer. Yeah, it must have been. <laughs> It, it it started getting really scratchy and yeah. Oh wow. Oh I'm okay. Sorry. Well, no problem at all. Yeah, we you know, we have to navigate our way through these electronical devices, right? Yes. Yes. <laughs> Sister Shamir says Shalom. Shalom says, How are you? <laughs> welcome, welcome. Yes, so we've got now. I just have to figure out what's going on with with my video, but yes, I promise, most high willing, I will have that figured out before our show next week. We so made that it. was we made it. That was a very interesting. Um, there's one more article. I'm not sure if I'm going to go through the whole thing, but just um, just basically a recap of what you just said, you know, you gave so much amazing, so much valuable information says mm. the, the water, the I water, the that. water. Let's see here. This, this one is, this article is from Harvard Health Publishing. And this goes specifically into the brain gut connection and explains why integrative treatments can help re relieve digestive ailments. Let's see how it's not so long. We can we can go through this really quick. It says here during the 20th century medicine became very good at comp compartmentalizing different systems of the body in order to understand them better. However, today we are increasingly realizing that different systems of the body are interconnected and cannot be completely understood in isolation. The brain gut connection is one very important example of this phenomenon. So the anatomy of the gut, the brain gut connection, what exactly is the connection between brain and gut? The brain sends signals to the digestive or GI system, the gastrointestinal tract via the sympathetic, like you said, the fight or flight, the nervous system, and the parasympathetic, the rest and digest nervous system. The balance of signals from these two inputs can affect the speed of which food moves through the digestive system, absorption of nutrients, secretion of digestive juices, and levels of inflammation in the digestive system. Everything that you went over, sis. So the digestive system also has its own nervous system. The enteric nervous system consisting of approximately 100 million, million nerve cells in and around the GI tract. 
So when somebody tells you you got a lot of nerves, say, yes, I do. <laughs> then tell That's you. good. <laughs> That's good. I love it. I love it. Oh, my gosh. Last, <laughs> last week, we learned about the billions of nerves in the brain, right? <laughs> and, and now we have millions of nerve cells in and around the GI tract. So yeah, we, we've got a lot of nerves. <laughs> I love it. I'm going to use that. <laughs> the enteric nervous system receives oh. inputs from the sympathetic and parasympathetic nervous system, but can also function independently of them. The enteric nervous system is also intimately interconnected with millions of immune cells. Boy, we are just, wow. Look at, Look at how the most high just, wow. Look at his, mm. his work. Yes. How can a bang do this? Anyhow, let's, yeah. let's keep it moving. <laughs> <laughs> These cells survey the digestive system and convey information such as whether the stomach is bloated or whether there is infection in the GI tract or insufficient blood flow back to the brain. Thus, mm. the brain and GI system communicate with one another in both directions. So effects of stress and negative emotions on the gut. Because of this strong brain-gut connection, stress and a variety of negative emotions, such as anxiety, sadness, depression, fear, and anger, can all affect the GI system. I know this for a fact. Mm. These triggers can speed up or slow down the movement of the GI tract and the contents within it, Makes make the digestive system overly sensitive to bloating and other pain signals, make it easier for bacteria to cross the gut lining and activate the immune system, increase inflammation in the gut and change the gut microbiota, the types of bacteria that reside in the gut. That's why stress and strong emotions can contribute to or worsen a variety of GI conditions, such as inflammatory bowel disease, Crohn's disease mm. and ulcerative colitis, irritable bowel syndrome, IBS, gastroesophageal reflux disease, GERD, and food allergies and sensitivities. The negative mm. changes in the, gut, in the GI system can then feed back on the brain, creating a vicious cycle. For example, new research is demonstrating that increased gut inflammation and changes in the gut microbiome can have profound effects throughout the body and contribute to fatigue, cardiovascular disease, and depression. Mm. So mind-body approaches to GI ailments. Given this strong mind-body, brain, gut connection, it should come as no surprise that the mind-body tools such as meditation, mindfulness, breathing exercises, it says here yoga, you know, for some people, and gut-directed hypnotherapy have all been shown to help improve GI symptoms, mm. improve mood, and decrease anxiety. One thing that they forgot to add here is prayer. Mm -hmm. <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's a whole... That? Yeah. I, I, in especially with the, the frontal part of the brain, you know, they talk about that's the, the voice of reasoning, which is where we receive that connection to the Holy Spirit. Right. And, and I, I don't know why they leave that most important part. You know, and there are so many studies and that's what I'm going to have to do. I'm going to have to pull up some of the scientific studies mm -hmm. about prayer and the effect that it has on on people's well-being and healing right so it's a, it's quite interesting that yoga made the list but prayer didn't <laughs> <laughs> and you you know when i was going through my um when you know when i first got diagnosed um <clears throat> that was one of the things that i would do was during my i i called it a cleansing moment when i was doing mm -hmm. the coffee enemas I would literally lay there and I would pray mm -hmm. and, um, oh, sis, this is such a good, you know, session today that so many things just flood to my mind. But 
it's the it's the the vibration of those words that send energy to the body, mm. which sends healing to the body. Come on. You know Come what on. I mean? You if you sit there and you read about nothing but negative stuff, how is your body going to respond to that? Come on. You know, but if you are constantly giving your not feeding yourself inspirational, inspiring stuff, affirmations. But when mm-hmm. the promises are applied, the body begins to respond and receive right. and accept it. So you, you, that was a good point for you to point that out. Well, yeah. Be, yeah. Uh, and, and for myself, I had, I had cataract surgeries, mm-hmm. both eyes. Mm. And when I went in for my surgery, they asked me, you know, they wanted to give me an IV, a sedative. And I said, no, I don't want a sedative. Um, and they said, oh, <laughs> you just want the eye drops? I said, yeah, just put the numbing drops in my eyes. And I did not get an IV sedative. I had numbing drops in my eyes and I, I laid there and had my cataract surgery. They monitored my blood pressure the ent- entire time. I was calm as a cucumber, cool Mm. as a cucumber. And what did I do? I just kept repeating the Lord's Prayer over and over and over in my head. That's all that I did during the entire surgery. Yes, yes. During the entire surgery. And I I didn't need a sedative. I was so Mm. calm. Wow. And I did that on both eyes on two separate occasions, two separate days. Just with the numbing drops. Mm-hmm. And I Ooh. mean, you, you can actually see the person coming, you know, the, the the doctor coming in and you hear little things being sucked out and so on and so forth. And I just laid there just as calm. And I just kept repeating the Lord's Prayer over and over and over again during the entire process. Wow. That's it. Got up. Got That's all you Wow. And, and, <laughs> You left them so, in a state of shock, huh? So it's, an, it's quite interesting that, like we said, we're talking about mind-body approaches, I guess, because they did not put mind-body-spirit there, right? right? Maybe, that's, maybe that's the word that's missing. Mm-hmm. The approach, mind-body-spirit approaches to GI ailments. Mm. You may have to send them a, you know, you got to write them on that article. <laughs> So it says here they decrease the body's stress response by dampening the sympathetic nervous system, enhancing mm-hmm. the parasympathetic response, and decreasing inflammation. Other integrative approaches. We also learned that certain kinds of foods can trigger specific reactions in the gut of sensitive individuals. In those mm-hmm. cases, specific diets such as the FODMAP for IBS or avoiding acidic foods for GERD can be helpful for managing symptoms. Diet also profoundly affects the gut microbiome. For example, eating a more plant-based diet with few refined carbohydrates and little or no red meat often Mm -hmm. leads to a healthier microbiome. These dietary changes in turn reduce intestinal inflammation and may help reduce systemic symptoms such as fatigue or depression and Mm. the risk of cardiovascular disease. Mm. Although each person's situation is unique, a combination of integrative approaches can be helpful for reducing GI symptoms and reestablishing both a healthy gut and a healthy mind. Let's not forget spirit. Yes. That's the number one priority. Well, we are, you know, we are made up of a mind, body, and spirit. So it's it's really difficult to address the whole person when you're leaving out part of that person. Exactly. From from the the treatment plan. Mm -hmm. So we have to we have to understand that we have to incorporate all of that mind, body, and spirit. And that's why it's so important for us to stay connected, have a, a, you know, a good church home to go to and, you know, these, yes. Yes. 
Yes, yes, yes. So, sis, oh my gosh, this was so amazing. This yes, was such a was. wonderful, informative session. I agree. You know, I wanted to, you know, when you were talking about 2024, we got to think about what happened in 2020 when mm -hmm. they had the lockdown. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody was shut in. And, you know, the spiritual side of that was if you weren't spiritually rooted and disciplined, then there was a lot of gluttony that took place. Yes. And yes. now yes. you have more and more people that are dealing with gut issues after gut it issues. when they realize, oh, my gosh, you know, I just sat there and I just, you know, I just leisurely drank my wine and, you know, I had anything and everything that I needed, you know, because you were locked down, you had access to anything that you wanted. You can make a phone call and your food was delivered to you. Right. Right. And now, and not, only, not only that, sis, mm -hmm. but we're talking about the, the mind. So many people were depressed. So many exactly. people were anxious. So many yes. people were on edge. Yes. So many people were angry. Yes. Yes. Fearful. There are, wanna, mm -hmm. there are people Ooh. that didn't even want to visit their family members. They isolated themselves. And it was all of the fear. And so now the gut is. <laughs> oh, it's all messed it's, up. It's all messed up. And then you're yes. feeding it all this stuff. This yeah. unhealthy stuff, because it's remember the comfort food. Mm -hmm. And then on top of that, you're depressed. Yeah. The and comfort now, food that leaves you feeling uncomfortable <laughs> after you've consumed it. <laughs> You know, <laughs> it leaves you feeling uncomfortable. <laughs> wow. And, oh, my and, goodness. Yes. Listening to your body when oh. you, you know, these are things. What's the first thing when, you know, you have a stomach ache? Mm -hmm. It sends a signal to your brain that something mm -hmm. is off and oh. you grab your stomach. Right. Or when you walk up to somebody and you're going, oh. I have a gut feeling that this is something's not right. Right. That gut, like you said, is your second brain. Second brain. Because yes. they are working in conjunction with each other. Yes. So, and so we need we need to treat them as such. Oh as, yeah. As even the article says that we cannot isolate these body systems because together they make a whole person. I've never I have never had a body part walk into my clinic by itself. <laughs> <laughs> if it did, you better run. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> I have never had that happen. You know, where an arm just came in broken by itself and fixed me. Yes, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it came in attached. Yes. To to a person, right? <laughs> yes. <laughs> so good. although this arm may be broken, the entire body is affected by this broken arm. Right. And so you cannot just address this arm as an entity in itself. You have to address the whole person. Whole body. Yeah, that's good. That's good. So yes, yes, yes. Any questions? Any questions? Do you have time for any questions right now? Mary says, we'll have to listen to this. Thanks again. You are so welcome, Mary. You are so welcome. Um, is that Bessie? Bessie says, good information. Oh, praise the most high. Mm. Really appreciate this topic. This was so Wonderful, sis. It really yes, was very, very informative. Oh, thank you. The very water. informative. So, yes. is there any way that that um, 
someone can reach out to you or do you want them to come to me and then I reach out to you? How do you prefer? Yeah, they can reach out to you. Um, I okay. send you a private chat with the link to the wellness center where I work at. Um, okay. If they want to do you, want, do you want to put it in, do you want to put it, post it in the comments? How can I do that? Oh, let me let see. Me. Let's see. You know I what? I may be it. able to. Okay. Let me see. You know what? I can do it. I can copy and paste it. Okay. There you see go. it? Uh huh. Oh, okay. I will. And do you want to tell a little bit about the, the wellness center? Oh, our wellness center is located in Rockwall, Texas. And like I had mentioned earlier, we do open colonics in the closed colonics. We also have an IV drip zone, which is where we do all natural IVs, such as, well, we have a Myers cocktail. And you'll see that on the website. It should be on the website. But if you mm -hmm. want to get an IV with nutrient rich, you know, vitamins and minerals, ozone, I mean, it, hydrogen peroxide, if you're trying to kill off, you know, any infections, bacteria, wow. viruses, lymphatic massages, lymphatic is one of the things that we do in conjunction with the colonics, uh, mm. lymphatic, yes, mm -hmm. massages, foot detox. And then we also have a nurse practitioner. That's a functional uh, medicine Let's practitioner. See. Yes. So perfect. Mm -hmm. it's wow, kind of like that sounds like a dream stop. come true. Oh, yes. Well, when yes. you come to Rockwall, when you're down in this area, I have to treat you to a session. You know, I'm coming. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, you you must also be uh, along with all of your other credentials. You must also be a mind reader because I was about to say, you know, I'm coming over there, right? <laughs> you know, I have to come oh, and visit. Oh yes, and you see will this love amazing, it. this amazing wellness center. Yes, you will I love so, it. <laughs> yes, I am so excited about that. Wow. Yes. Phases, but thank you so much, sis. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so, so much. much for taking out this time out of your very busy schedule. Oh, my to, pleasure. Yeah, to educate mm. us mm -hmm. and enlighten us on colon hydrotherapy. There's just so much, there's just so much to it. You and, are welcome. And, and re helping us to realign the brain and gut connection. Wow. I, I truly, truly appreciate you taking this time to do this. Thank you. You are welcome. And we can't wait for you to return in the very near future. Oh, right? for sure. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> to be continued. Thank you so to much. To be for continued. It. I really appreciate you creating this platform for us to grow and learn, you know, because education is, is power. Yes. You know, now you're giving us the tools. You're welcome, Althea. I'm sorry about the noise, but um, no yeah, education is a, a is a, a powerful tool to have because it's those things that we don't know, you right. know, and but when you you know it now, you can start making more educated decisions, right? Right. What does yeah. the Bible say? My people perish. Multi says, "My people perish." for a lack of knowledge, mm -hmm. right? It's a yeah. lack of knowledge why we have been perishing. Right. So it is time, we have so much information at our fingertips now, right? That ignorance is no longer an excuse. Right. It's no longer an excuse. And, and yeah. you know, I just thank the most high for, for giving me this platform because this was, this was all him. This, this wasn't me. Mm. My daughter had been telling me, oh, mom, you need to do this. You need to do that on YouTube and so on and so forth. And I was like, <laughs> what am I going to do on YouTube? <laughs> <laughs> and look at you now. <laughs> and look at me now. Right. But he yeah. had to, like I said, he had to take me away from, like I said, I was on that respirator called a job for so long and it was oh, you know that is quite so him weaning me off of that <laughs> and and you know he says you can breathe on your own 
You can yes. do it. <laughs> I, I have to put that one in my art. Uh, man, I getting off of the respirator. That was good. That's that's good. As my sister so, yes. would say, that's godrific. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and and he he was the one that breathed new life into me. Wow. Right? So that I can yes. so that I can do this. And I am so grateful. I'm so grateful because of the connections that you know, I'm making and he's bringing so many of us that are like-minded together. And yes. this is what we need for such a time as this, right? So I thank you once again. You're and we're, yeah, well, we'll talk about it, about what's coming up, right? Okay. Did you want to, did you want to stay on while we talk? Yes. So, so April, like I said, is alternative and complementary therapies and treatment month. And isn't it on fire? Is it? This is just the second. This is just the second show at, for April, and we've had back-to-back -back shows that are jam-packed with so much information. And mm. we're only into week two. Wow! So we're learning so much about how to live healthier and more productive lives by allowing our body to heal itself the way the Most High intended it to. Mm -hmm. So the next two weeks shows promises to deliver more great content right so i am actually working on getting an herbalist in for Ooh. next week mm. i have my fillers out right now and um i'm very confident that the multi is going to deliver that for us for next week so at this at this current time i can't speak on who it is yet but the goal for next week is to have an herbalist on here to talk to us about herbal remedies mm. so i am pretty nice. excited about that and then the following week the last week of april mm -hmm. sister patricia is going to be back with us again <laughs> and we are going to tag team and our discussion will be about coaching and sister patricia happens to be a health and life coach and mm. i myself am a corporate and individual health and wellness coach so powerful that is going to be a dynamic show i believe so I believe we'll talk so about too. yeah we'll talk about coaching and um the benefits of of coaching mm. but yes you'll have health and, and life coaching and health and wellness and not just from the individual standpoint but also from the corporate standpoint oh nice coaching. Mm. So I am so excited. I'm looking forward to, to these two upcoming shows. And like I said, if there are any sisters out there that would like to co-host a show, um, please send me an email. Please send me an email so that we, we can, I, I'm not sure yet. I haven't looked into May what our month, our theme for the month of May is yet. We still have a couple of weeks mm -hmm. to decide, but I'm sure the way things have been going that we will be led in the direction to where it's going to be something that's going to hinge on what we've learned so far and just to take us to an even higher level. Mm. So Sounds yes. exciting. It's so exciting. So please invite others to show up for the next two weeks shows and i promise you won't be disappointed so sisters i hope that you found the information that was presented tonight useful if you did please do me a favor and share this video with your sister friends and relatives let's grow this channel so that the information can reach Hebrews throughout the four corners of the earth. And even those who are not Hebrews but are willing to be a part of our community. Mm -hmm. We are open. We, we want to help everyone. 
We yes. want to help everyone. And in doing so, we want others to come on that can help us as well because we don't know everything. Exactly. So that's why I am opening up this platform to those out there that have knowledge and wisdom to share, to please come on and, and share that information with us. And remember, we are to let our light shine so that others can be led to the source of the light. Mm. Right? We're not the source. <laughs> We're just the conduit. Oh, th there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. So I thank you. Thank you, Sister Patricia. Thank, thank you. you, all of the viewers out there. Sister Ann says, enjoyed all the great information. Also, Patricia, thank you for sharing. Yes. Thank you for the invitation. Yes. So, wow. Thank you for thank you all for taking time out of your busy schedules to have tea and conversation with me. And tonight, kombucha with me. Sister, Sister Joan said Anna says, yes, we don't know everything until. Video sources like this share their experiences, strength, and hope. All praises to the most high. Oh, that's my Anna. Oh. <laughs> She's in California. Oh, wow. Where? Barstow. Barstow. Oh. <laughs> She's familiar with that, Anna. <laughs> oh. oh, man. Okay. Wait until we tell our story, right? Exactly, exactly. Yes, so much coming <laughs> up. So know that I am praying for you. I'm praying for all of you. I'm praying yes. for us. So until the Most High brings us back together, may you prosper and be in mm. good health. And remember, true healing begins inwardly before it is expressed outwardly. Beautiful. Part of that is... Clean colon. <laughs> you have to put that little plug in there. That's good. <laughs> I, oh I, I, couldn't, I, I couldn't miss that opportunity. <laughs> That's a good one. <laughs> Great way to end the show. <laughs> Great way to end the show. So I am your hostess, Kuala Yakaka, a voice of reasoning and justice. Good night. Thank Good you night. all for being here. Sister, Sister Madaqua says, the water, Patricia, your info was very informative. Sister oh, Donna thank says, you. thank you. Amazing. Oh, that was my Yes, we're getting, sister. yes. Yes. Sister Anna says, God is good all, all the time. The time. <laughs> and all the time? God is good. <laughs> All praises. Sister. Okay. Have a blessed week. I love you all so much. And I can't wait to see you next week if it be the most high's will. Peace Shalom. And blessings. Peace and blessings. Shalom and barakatha.